Hello. I pray you're well today. We're back in Romans 12 again. Love must be sincere. Hate what's evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of, no, of low position. Do not be conceited. And verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. In other words, when somebody calls us a name, we don't call them a name back. When somebody hurts us, we don't hurt them back. When somebody ignores us, we don't ignore them back. Don't repay anyone evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Be careful. Be careful with our words. Be careful with our actions. If it is possible, verse 18, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you. In other words, we do our part to be peaceful and to live in peace and to not repay evil. Verse 19, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. It is mine to avenge, I'll repay, says the Lord. In other words, revenge is not your business. God keeps score. He knows. In the blood of Jesus Christ, we can be forgiven, but it says this statement, it's mine to avenge. It's God's to avenge. God knows. We don't have to do God's work. On the contrary, God says, what should we do? If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In this, you will heap burning coals on his head. What does that mean? It says, don't take revenge because God knows. And as it says, in your enemy is hungry, feed him. If the person who's treated you wrong, go beyond and do the opposite thing. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. What does that mean? I don't know if you've ever seen a, a charcoal briquette. You know how you have a charcoal grill and you light it and then they are red hot. I don't know if you can imagine touching it, but that would hurt. But you imagine putting it in the middle of your forehead, that would burn, that would scar, that would be painful. And so God says, when we do the right thing to the people who are doing the wrong thing, we are making a godly impression because it's about God not about us or even our pain. Don't have payback. Don't have revenge. Leave that to God. God is the one with his economy. And then the last verse, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be pulled under. I always think of a riptide with this verse. I always think of getting pulled with the undercurrent. Do not be pulled along and overcome by evil. Do not be overwhelmed by evil, but instead, overcome evil with good. Do the right thing. Do not be, there's so much going on right now. Don't, as we watch the news, we read the newspaper, we hear news reports, there's so much sadness. Do not be drawn in and, and overtaken. Instead, we, as salt and light within this world, as those who speak the message of Jesus Christ, who live the message of Jesus Christ, we are not overcome by evil, but we come overcome evil with good. God's economy is not an economy of revenge. God's economy is an economy of doing what they don't expect. Be kind. Please pray with me. Lord God, life is complicated and life is difficult and life is hard sometimes. We pray for wisdom and grace and power and peace and blessing. We pray, Father, that in this word from Romans chapter 12, that you would give to us precisely what we need and that we would have peace in you. We would not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.